All that is is rinse your brush out, take pure gesso with a little bit of yellow, very clean color this time. And you put this on real thick. Now this is hard for some of you because you're afraid to do this, but take the paint and just dab it on right like that. See how I've dabbed it on there? And you work this in and down into the little crack, see right there, and you kind of wipe your brush out and you take this color and you just sort of dab it around like this. until it kind of disappears into the background. Anytime you want to create a glow like this, you've got to put the paint on thick enough that it looks really clean and crisp. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. So that's real thick, and then over here too. And remember, the sun is just kind of, I mean, I don't really know that this is where the actual sun is. That seems to be a misunderstanding too. The sun could be anywhere back in here, but this is just the one spot where it's the brightest coming through. And so you'll see sun rays coming from an area that may, the sun may not be just right there, actually. And so I'm just kind of putting a little softness on the edge of these, maybe making the, the pocket just a little more interesting shape. See right here, for instance, I may come right in through here and just put this Just kind of take your finger and blend it in. Don't be afraid to use your finger. Boy, that's one of the best paint brushes you have. And it doesn't cost you a penny. Okay. Put a little over here. All right, now I'm going to kind of quickly bounce around here. It'll drive our camera people crazy, but that's kind of my job. We'll just come right on through here. Move this direction, kind of soften this in. Okay. Now, we're going to switch to another brush here. And we're going to start putting the silver lining on the clouds. So we switch now down to a smaller, like a little round sable. This is our number four round sable. It's very round, very small, uh, but it's great for this. And you use the same color. You take the white and the yellow, and you just take it and you blend it together down here and create a nice little pile. It's very creamy, it's very thick, very opaque. That's the key to this. <coughs> Okay, now there's quite a bit of this going on. So what you do is you take this silver lining color and you just kind of skim it along the surface. And most of you know what a silver lining is. You know what I'm referring to. It's a little glow on the edge of something that's got a backlight on it. See that nice little glow around there? Well, that's beautiful. Really adds a nice finishing touch to your skies. Now, don't make it solid. That's one mistake a lot of people make. They make a solid line where you just, it's kind of a broken line. See, it's just kind of not real solid. I'm just kind of skimming the surface. It just creates a little thin sliver of light right on the outer edge. See how cool that's looking? Making the sky really come alive now. Then we'll dry brush in some of the sun rays in just a second, or we don't run out of time. Well, at least I can show you how and you can play with the sun rays, maybe. Okay, now we just about got all the silver linings in there. Very quickly, I'll get you started on the sun rays, and then we're going to probably have to quit for this session, but take your number four bristle brush, take the same color, the white and the yellow, start right in the area where you had your sun, and you make sure your brush is dried out. And you skim the surface like this. Barely skim. You can go above, you can go below, you can go any direction you want to as long as it comes out of the area where the sun burst is. 
And this also is a good technique for graying and softening uh, an area. See how nice you just kind of skim it. This is dry brush blending in the pure sense of the word. So you got to be very careful. It's a very, very, very light touch. And you just kind of pull it where you think you need it. And that'll create, oh man, you can drag these way down in here. And then you'll know where to highlight. Well, as usual, folks, we're about to run out of time. Once again, I want to thank you for the endless stream of cards and letters. Keep them coming in. So God bless you. Stay inspired. Keep painting. And I promise to see you again real soon on another Yarnell School of Fine Art. Hey, welcome to the Yarnell School of Fine Art. You caught me. I was trying to get ahead of you here. I got a lot of work to do on this painting, so we're going to have to get started here. However, before we do, I want to thank all of you for the incredible number of cards, letters, emails, and phone calls that we've been receiving from, from you all from all around the world. It's been fascinating to read your letters. And listen, we need to hear from you because I can't, we read every single letter. Now, I can't respond personally to each one because there's just so many. But we love to hear from you. And let us know what your ideas are, what some of your issues are with your painting and the techniques you're struggling with because I have a wonderful staff that loves to help and take care of you. So please call. Let us know what you want to see on the program and some of the things we can do to help you. And who knows, maybe we'll get to meet together and paint together in some of my workshop around the country, or maybe you can come out to my studio. Some of you have been there before. Um, <clears throat> now, let's get started. We left off last week, if you remember, working on this painting from Sedona, Arizona. I've been corrected. It's not Sedonia, it's Sedona. So I know now how to pronounce it, so I apologize for anyone that lives there. I've got it right now. But we left off putting the sun rays in, if you remember, last week. And remember the reference material, which is kind of interesting. I've taken two pieces of the reference material, one the original photograph, which you see here, and then I took these uh, photographs, three different ones, and put them together. Now, I took these off of my deck at my studio. I have a beautiful studio with a deck that overlooks the country, and uh, we have great skies, so I just took this one day and put two and two together, and this is what you call a composite painting. So now we've got that. <clears throat> Might as well take a quick look at the finished one over here. We have a couple more sessions to go. Hopefully we can get this done. What we're going to do now is we're going to work through this area of the painting and start building in some of the lights and the darks and some of the little details and maybe work on the snow a little bit. Done just a little bit of that, but I haven't done too much. Then we've got this little nice little section here that's really fascinating to do. And then we'll come back and add a few more highlights and things. So let's get started. I know some of you, it's kind of hard to follow these shows uh, as we do them here, but you can always go back and work on these on your own time. So don't, don't worry if you don't get, you know, stay up with us. It is a little bit difficult. Now we're going to take our number four bristle brush, because it's a, and a fairly flat one. See, this was a fairly new one. Now you can get some that are, you know, kind of worn down, but see how nice and flat that is? This makes a better stroke up here when you're doing these kind of highlights. Now what we want to do is put the vertical or horizontal highlights on, so you go in this direction. So we come down here to our palette, and we're going to take a, a red and orange. And it's a much deeper tone with a little bit of white. And you're going to come back here and use quick vertical, I mean horizontal strokes like this. And now notice how I leave little, see those little pockets of dark in between? That's why we underpaint, folks, with a dark underpainting. You have to do that. And then you let the dark work for you. Then you don't have to come back and add it. See, it's already in there for you. Yeah, you just sort of ad lib this, but you just kind of go down through here. And sometimes it's big, long patches like that. Sometimes it's shorter. Some places you don't do too much at all. You just kind of skim the surface to create a little softer effect. You can go up and down occasionally to kind of blend things together. I'm leaving lots of little pockets of the dark come through. That's what makes it look three-dimensional. Now we'll come back here and do a similar thing. Now, the difference here is kind of odd. <clears throat> this one is reversed. Up here, it's redder on the top and, and then browner, I mean uh, grayer at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is reverse this now. I'm going to go ahead and take that same reddish color we were using. We're going to redden it up a 